Well, let's pick up on some of the key concerns of the Chiefs at the Special Assembly here in Ottawa. I'm joined by Canada's newly appointed Minister of Indigenous Services, Mark Miller. Minister Miller, it's good to see you again and congratulations on your appointment. Thanks, Peter. Let's start with the issue of First Nations child welfare and compensation. Uh, explain for us why your government isn't simply accepting the ruling from the Human Rights Tribunal uh, to pay the $40,000 compensation to each of these First Nations children instead of fighting the ruling uh, through the legal process. How come? Well, Peter, what we're looking for is always in the interest of the children. The, the, the Canadian government never questioned whether discrimination occurred uh, or whether compensation was due. This is just an issue. This is an issue of uh, of making sure that the compensation is is fair, just, and equitable. And when we look uh, at the settlements that this government has moved quickly on, uh, whether it's the Indian Day School, the residential school settlement, the 60 Scoop litigation, you see uh, responses to systemic discrimination. Uh, and systemic compensation. So uh, what the court awarded for a, a class of children that had been uh, prejudiced over a 10-year period is individual compensation. Uh, and we feel that there's a larger class that needs to be addressed. Another 15-year period going back to 1991, there is a class action that has been introduced in the courts, uh, the main litigant being Xavier Michou. Uh, and we want to sit down with the parties involved, including uh, the parties that are proponents to the, the, the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal decision and, and, and work things out, uh, working towards a settlement that is that is fair, just and equitable. Uh, there are parallel processes in play. One process is working uh, to figure out a model that the court has asked us to develop for a January 29th deadline. Right. And at the same time sitting down with, with uh, parties to the litigants in the class action and working towards a model of compensation that is just, fair and equitable for what is systemic discrimination uh, and not simply uh, individual discrimination. So uh, there are a number of legal particularities as well with the jurisdictional issues. Those are being raised in court. Uh, these are issues that are, that are complex. Um, to a very emotionally charged. Okay, what, what I'm, I guess what I'm getting at is so issue that deals fundamentally with children, and so uh, what, what we want to move forward on, and I've instructed my officials, the, the officials from the Department of Justice, will be engaged in talking to the parties uh, and seeing where we can find some common ground. So at the end of the day, will there, like, so I, so we can understand, there seems there's a sort of two-track process happening here. At the end of the day, will there be uh, some sort of settlement? Uh, will there be two settlements, or is, is the government's objective here to have a wider uh, resolution of this for anybody who was adversely affected by the child welfare system on First Nations? Well, Peter, we want to address a class that starts from 1991 onwards, uh, and we would uh, want to achieve something that is fair, just, and, and equitable for, for the children that were prejudiced. Uh, and that would involve those discussions that haven't, uh, haven't reached a level of maturity that, that, that we want to bring them towards. And that is why, specifically, I've asked uh, my department to identify uh, people that can engage in those conversations uh, so that that relationship of trust can be achieved uh, in a parallel process with the Minister of Justice and his team. At, at the end of the day, are you looking, for, will, will what the government is looking for, will that end up being a larger settlement uh, than it would be if you simply observed uh, the order from the Human Rights Tribunal? So I guess the bottom line is, is this a money issue? Or are you trying to find a way to pay less money? Or in the end, do you think you will pay more money? Peter, this is this is and should not be about money. This is about ensuring that uh, systemic discrimination is addressed and compensated fairly to those people that have suffered the prejudice. Uh, and that's what we're aiming towards at all times. It has to be just, fair and equitable. Uh, and that's why we, uh, we're we going to sit down, and I've instructed my officials to do so, right, to but sit down but does and have just, those discussions does, that need to be had does in just order to fair come and up with a model. Does just, fair and equitable mean just, fair and equitable to the federal government? Less money paid out than what you're being ordered to pay out? Just fair and equitable to the children. All right. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm still wondering. I mean, you're looking for a, a solution at the end of the day to this, but it seems to me the Human Rights Tribunal has given you the solution. Compensate those kids. Why is it more complicated than that? The Human Rights Tribunal, Peter, doesn't address a 15-year period that we are attempting to address, and that's, that's exceedingly important. And in order to look at that 15-year period, we have to look and talk to the people involved in the CHRT Tribunal decision and talk to a wider class of people in order to come forward with a number of models that, that make sense, uh, fair, that are fair and equitable.
Okay, the, the government has passed Bill C-92, we know that. It's aimed at giving Indigenous groups more of a say in how child welfare systems are set up, potentially even running uh, their own child welfare systems. That takes effect January 1st, and yet uh, there's no funding attached to the bill to allow Indigenous groups to take over child welfare services. You heard some concerns about that today. Some chiefs have estimated that cost at $3.5 billion. What's your plan to fund this process? Well, first of all, Peter, what, what, uh, what viewers need to know is that uh, in January of this coming year, uh, Indigenous peoples will have control uh, and custody, the ability to exercise control and inherent right and custody over, over their children. That is an important right that will crystallize on uh, January of this year. And, and now, the various levels of Indigenous groups, peoples have been working on this for some time. Uh, when and where they, they draw down jurisdiction is up to them. Uh, my department, along with others, stands ready to help them and assist them in this critical period. Uh, we need to get this right. Uh, implement, implementation in this area is key. We don't want more children going uh, under care. There's, um, but, but who's going to pay, who, who, who's gonna pay for the community who, to community? Who will pay for the transition process? So we need to work, uh, Peter, with the, with the provincial governments, with uh, Indigenous peoples, to ensure that this implementation takes place. Uh, there, there are aspects of the legislation that don't require funding, and there are more comprehensive aspects of the legislation that do require uh, more wraparound uh, solutions. Uh, people that talked about that 3.5 billion number, Peter, uh, dealt with housing, poverty strategies. Um, implementation uh, means a lot of things, and uh, it's important to get it right. We stand ready already under the envelopes that we fund, whether it's uh, infrastructure portfolios, whether it's uh, ongoing health service support, to transition uh, that, that, that sovereignty, that control over the resources that we need to do. So again, this is a discussion that my department will be fully engaged on. We're reaching out to, to Indigenous groups that are stand ready to draw down on their uh, inherent rights. And this is something that, as you've raised, is, it's an issue of money, but it's, it's, it's immensely complex, and, um, but we'll be there to help. Okay, uh, what, let, me, let me just see if I can... Uh, narrow that down for us for our audience a little bit so are, are you prepared to commit now that First Nations will not have to cover the costs of this transition in child welfare services that the federal government is prepared to foot that bill well I will engage with First Nations and those that are willing to, to enter into agreements to draw down uh, on a case-by-case -case basis because there is a distinctions based approach to this this is something we agree to uh, and uh, if there's support that's needed uh, the federal government stands ready to support all right, uh, Indigenous Services Minister Mark Miller. I appreciate your time tonight, uh, Minister. Uh, congratulations on the appointment again, and I hope we get a chance to talk again soon. Thank you, Peter.